Hi, good morning to you. Um, this is Fergoland Tunnel, the most haunted tunnel in the area. Anyway, that's debatable whether it's haunted or not. The tunnel is 924 feet long and it was built in 1948. Uh, the reason why it was built is to for when they electrified the line, but it used to come through the older tunnel, which is down here. This is the old tunnel. So this is the old tunnel. It's been filled in, uh, but you can get in there. Um, it was built in 1845. Well, that's when it opened in 1845. You could imagine the hard work this, this involved lifting these rocks and they, they, they're very sturdy, very, very heavy. And you've got to appreciate the work involved in building something like this in them days in the 1800s. So that's the tunnel. I'm not going to go down because it's too dark and I ain't got my lights with me. But that's where it goes. That's the old tunnel. Okay, so what happened with this tunnel? This is the new tunnel. It was built in 1948. Now, uh, the reason it was built is because the old tunnel, which we just showed you, um, wasn't high enough for the electrical system when trains went electric from steam. So basically, uh, they built this tunnel in 1948 and they could fit the trains through. And as we go through, you'll see the steel panels at the top, which used to hold the electric uh, cables in the top. Um, when you think about it, this, this would have been a lot of work to do in 1948 uh, and it only lasted till 1983 when the last train went through this particular tunnel. Um, it was an up tunnel, the trains they didn't come down it, they went up it and they came down the old tunnel. So that was kept open as well um, until 1946, uh, something like that. So trains would come up here and down the other one. Uh, that's the tunnel there, and we're going to have a walk in there now to see what, um, or hopefully it will be as haunted as they say it is down here. Right, okay, I've got my K2 meter here. Uh, it's an EMF meter, and it's supposed to register activity. So we're going to walk right through the tunnel. Uh, you'll notice the... Um, my tone of the voice will alter as I go along. So no activity at the moment. And it's still on green. There's a couple of cycles I go through. Okay. Still walking through. This tunnel is actually lit at night and during the day as well. And it does go out after midnight, I believe. So if you want to come down here after midnight, you won't get the light on. Unfortunately, I've not brought my light in today, so uh, hopefully we're relying on the existing lights. We've still got no activity. Right. Right. So really, we didn't have much coming through this side. We had a little bit of flicker in the middle and that was about it. So what we're going to do is go down the other side and see if anything happens down there. But sometimes you can get activity a lot out here. Um, so let's have a look down this wall here because it's usually active around this area. And we're not getting anything at the moment. So we'll go down the other side. Thanks. Yeah, as this project began in 1947, it was just before the railway nationalised. Uh, nationalised. Start again. As this project was begun in 1947, it was just before the railway nationalisation uh, of British Railways. Uh, each of the upper tunnels, or the portals, um, they all twin dates, if you noticed, and uh, one is with LNER in 1947. And it's inscripted in the central parapet panel uh, that's at the top of the portals and br which is what the one we're looking at now in 1948 uh, below in the keystone as well uh, it's due to the anticipated interim period um, of the steam working before the new electric woodhead 3 tunnel was completed 
So apparently that's roughly about here with this um, train. Um, built in 1948, it ceased in 1983. The last train came through in 1983. Anyway, uh, now it's a part of the uh, Upper Don Valley and the Trans Pennine Way. So a lot of walkers, a lot of dog walkers, a lot of runners and a lot of horses come through this way. It's very popular as well. So we're going to make his way back down through that end to the other side and see if we get any activity on the K2 meter. Join me down here. As you can see, the little carved bits in the ceiling is where the, the electric cables were hung from there. And then every so often uh, you'll get one, uh, roughly every 25 yards or something like that, probably less actually. And they go all the way through the tunnel. Right, we're right in the middle of the tunnel now. We did have a little bit of activity in there actually, but it was momentarily um, short. So we'll just have a look. So we can get oh, there we go. Right, it's going to orange. If there are any spirits in this tunnel, would you like to come forward? I've got a device in my hand which can detect you and show your presence. Do you want to come and help us and walk towards this um, K2 meter? Right, there is some noise at the other end. Uh, I don't know what that is. As I say, it was momentarily and now it's gone again. Okay, we'll carry on walking, see if we can get any action down here. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, my little film uh, on Thurgoland Tunnel. Um, it was interesting to uh, hear uh, on how it was built, when it was built, and what it was used for a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get anything on the K2 meter. We got a little bit, but not a lot. And uh, I've been through it before with this and got much more activity than I did today. That's the way it goes. So we'll say goodbye and thank you for watching. See you on the next video.